Thank you so much for that great um, introduction. Hi, Tanya, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you, Gary? It's good to see uh, you. You too, you too. It's a privilege and a pleasure to bring this work out to the group of Catapult Education because uh, I know that they're innovative and forward thinking and you know, hygiene is really taking a, um, a different tone after uh, this COVID thing. So we're gonna talk about what to do and how to do it in the next 45 minutes. So I'm super excited to, to do this with you. We've been doing it all across the US and let's just talk about how we got started and what we're gonna talk about tonight. So how we got started, uh, you had some clients who you were working with who were doing amazing results with PeriProtect and we were hearing about how healthy their patients were getting and people kept saying, you gotta talk to Gary. And I was like, that great, I'll get a hold of Gary. And um, so we finally did get connected. And then, so I started attending your events and kind of watching and it, I realized it wasn't just an office here or there that was doing well, there was a consistent pattern. There's a, there's a system of delivery uh, that's proven uh, again and again and again. And so it was at that point that I realized um, not only were you doing such great work to help offices get more patients healthier and, and thrive as a team, right? but also that I was gonna learn a lot from you. And over the years, I really have. So I really appreciate um, this collaboration and I'm looking forward to tonight. Yeah, thank you, uh, and Tanya. Uh, what a privilege to work with you. And I was too busy, you know, too many people were saying, you gotta meet Tanya at PeriProtect. And I'm like, I'm just too busy. And, you know, I really wanna talk about, it. I know we have a lot of hygienists on our, our, um, our live feed tonight. And um, hygienists really changed my life. I was a traditional business and team development. My core competency was to deliver um, happy teams that implemented sustainable results. That's what I was great at and I loved doing it. And my dad had a heart attack and he had a heart attack. And then the next day uh, he survived, quintuple bypass. And I sat in a hygiene meeting and we were talking about, you know, building some of the things we're gonna talk about tonight. and. The one hygienist said to me, well, your dad had a heart attack. How was his perio? And I'm like, what does that have to do with my dad's heart attack? And, you know, coming from a business background, team development background, I didn't understand the clinical science behind it. And I just got obsessed with it. Uh, some of you may have seen the documentary that I built and funded it was called Say Ah. Um, and I just have gotten, it was the holy grail for me to learn about the oral systemic connection and its impact not only for um, hygiene departments, like we're gonna talk about today, and dental practices, but really saving lives. Like if you move, if you get anything out of tonight and learning objectives, if you move or already bought into, on a good day you save a smile, and on a great day you save a life. On a, great, on a good day you save a smile, on a great day you save a life, then that is an amazing takeaway that will really allow you to post COVID, that's where the patient is right now. So let's talk about what we're gonna to learn tonight. Um, Tanya, let's talk about better results first. What do you mean by that? So uh, we mean better clinical results, both in the near term, the short term, and in the long term. But we also mean better finances, better practice development, better outcomes for your team. And that also means that it's just gonna be easier Right? How many times, hygienists, you don't want one more thing to put in your in your hour or 40 minutes. And docs, do you really want to sit down and do the business? Or do you want to have someone come in and show different systems, give you options, right? Like what's the capacity for your practice? And do you want to try to develop a plan to get there? You can run it on your own or you could ask for help either way. But these, these results are tangible and it's all about putting hygiene in the center of the practice. Yep. Yep. And one of the key elements, especially in hygiene, is like attracting hygienists. A lot of hygienists didn't come back. They're dealing with like kids who are not at school. So there was a shrinking of hygiene uh, departments. So you have to be more efficient, more effective with PPE on. Um, so how do we deal with all this stuff? It was hard to run a world class hygiene department before that really drove the practice. See, that's the key, the hygiene department, because the patient thinks I need to get my teeth clean. That's why they come in. But building a practice as the engine of your hygiene department, we're going to show you how to do that today. We're also going to talk about how real live doctors and hygienists have dealt with, you know, and these are doctors that are in the same, you know, small towns, big towns, uh, smaller practices, bigger practices. Um, 
they all grappled with the same thing. And that's one of the things that, you know, a lot of doctors report to Tanya and I is like, and, and hygienists, it's like, oh, I just thought that we had that going on in our, um, our own practice, like the concept of term terminal uniqueness. And when you really get that, like, we have the landscape that we're gonna discuss from experience all across North America, Canada, 44 states in the US, Caribbean, we're gonna be able to give you the pulse tonight on what's happening and the formula, the step-by-step -step formula on how to have a million dollar hygiene only practice. Tanya, this was what where we really came together because I was like, how can you ever have a, a million dollar hygiene department? And we're gonna show you how to do that tonight. And that's how you and I connected. That's really what woke me up. I'm like, we, you know, I had a client, our mutual client was using Perioprotect and I'm like, they had a breakthrough in that they had the first million dollar hygiene department that I knew of in the US. And it was combining what you're gonna to learn tonight from, from me and then what you're gonna learn from Tanya. And that combination really allows you to get your patients healthier, get your practice healthier, have more fun while you're doing it and make a bigger difference. So. Yeah, and, and I just wanna reiterate, Gary, the reason it works so well is because they're focused on the right goal, getting the patients healthier, right? This is why it works. This is why it is so much fun to do this job. Absolutely, and, you know, because it turns, it turns a job into a career. It turns dread into, I can't wait to come to work today. It, it turns, um, you know, drill, fill, and bill into this place purpose. of purpose. Yeah. And this visual from our dear friend, uh, Chip Whitney, who um, you're also gonna be able to learn about is bringing dementia certification to hygienists um, uh, with, in combination with Dale Bredesen. So look for that coming out. But what he's talking about here is the perfect visual. On the right side, it's reactive care. It's transactional care. It's this guy like my dad right now sitting in a wheelchair Quintuple bypass, eight stents, his age outlasted his health, Tanya. On the left side, preventive care, proactive care, predictable care, in the dental office, you know, because inflammation is the root cause of all chronic disease. And when you start looking at your practice as a longevity practice, practice delivering longevity for people, the purpose is higher, the value is higher. And if you want to get off insurances, if you want to, um, if you want to, you know, retire and you want more time off, if you want people to pay your fees, if you want people to respect you when you make recommendations, that's the game we're talking about here. So I want to talk about the hygiene formula. So we believe at minimum you should take four weeks off, maybe six, maybe eight, but I'm going to just going to do four weeks. 48 weeks times four days a week is 192 days. So if a hygienist works 192 days, now watch this. This, this is the formula of that practice that we went to. And now we just took that. Once somebody breaks the record, like Roger Bannister broke the four minute mile, once it's shown to be done, 37 people broke the, broke the four minute mile. What changed the belief that it could be done? Whether you think you can or think you can't, either way you're right. We now have the formula, doing $300,000 a year is doable in a hygiene department, and it's happening all around the US, um, Tanya, isn't it? I mean, aren't you experiencing this all over with people that are using PeriProtect? We are seeing it, and I was, um, I, I wanna say I'm pleasantly surprised at how fast the dental offices have come back, how fast hygiene is rebounding in so many places, and, um, not and it's it, we're seeing a rebound there but particularly among those offices that are following this formula gary let's specify here that this is reverse engineering right yeah. that you need to know what your goal is each day in order to get to the location that, to the place where you want to get so that's what our formula here is and if you have the goals and the roadmap it's a lot easier to hit it yep and that's the thing if you just go you know show up for the day without an intention and a purpose. So if you don't have purpose and value creation, the numbers don't work. And I wanna, for those hygienists go, who are sitting out there going, Gary, I thought I liked you. I didn't know if I liked you, but the minute you whipped out your numbers, I was like, oh, this guy's a snake oil salesperson. Here's the way we define numbers. 
numbers are the scoreboard for the health that you're providing for your patients. It's the exchange number, the difference maker. It's the person who says, yes, I will invest in the value you created for me because I understand that value and I want to pay out of my own money to you for the value you created. So let's just get down. $300,000 a year, $1,600 a day, eight patients a day gets us to 195 per patient. Now, you might be saying like, okay, if I have PPO fees, you're never going to get there. Also, if you, you know, I want to highlight here, the 50% of the U.S. has some form of periodontal disease, right? Some form of advanced gingivitis, right? If that's the case, what do you think the average diagnostic nationwide, we have 10 million treatment plans. What do you think the average diagnosis is for um, any form of perio treatment? What do you think? Any 43, 41s, et cetera? That's right, 8%. Diagnosed, four treated. There's so much available to us. Well, and, let's stop there. Wait, wait, wait. 8% right. diagnosed and only 4% treated. When yeah. half of Americans, half of Americans have chronic periodontitis and almost the rest of the half has gingivitis. Let, 4% treated. Yeah, and here's what the sad part is. A lot of people are getting advanced perio treatment and they're not being charged for it. That's the other problem we deal with. Um, wrote that in my second book, uh, Raise Your Healthy Deserve Level. If you don't think you receive and deserve and allow yourself to diagnose and then receive the money, that is the blind spot for a lot of practitioners where they don't know that they don't know that deep down inside they 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 don't know how to receive Tanya. And you know, we do a lot of work in the area of teaching people how to receive money, receive love, receive acknowledgement. That's a key part of this formula as well that, that's underneath it all. But if we look at the nine, 195, um, the revenue per hygienist is 300. We believe, and we see it all the time, it's, it, if you're retaining your patients, which you're gonna find the average practice is only retaining 22% twice a year. Another area of huge opportunity, when we get people to be retained on the 80 percentile, you need two hygienists per doctor, minimum. We have three hygienists per doctor in our high performing offices. That's the ratio because it's harder to go to hygiene checks once you get past three. So we keep it at that. So if you have two hygienists, that's $600,000. And then the restorative care coming out of the treatment when the hygienist educates the patient, uses the intro camera, has the whole patient education system, has a handoff from the back, all the other part of this system, that's over a million dollars. That's how we got to this million dollar practice. Pretty amazing, um, Tanya, wouldn't you say? That, you know, before this, even a couple of years ago, this was unheard of. Right, and in areas in like rural Kansas, they're still doing it rural Kansas, um, small town, Oklahoma. I mean, it is, it, it, it's whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, either way you're right. I wanna talk about Reno, Nevada. Jen and, John and Jen Baki, they, they're uh, the owners of Sierra Smiles, you know, beautiful young family, um, hardworking, um, great. They have deep love for their team. They care deeply about their team. And they were like, how do I get past this? And Jen is the hygienist, and she's married to John, who's the dentist. And um, they have their two beautiful kids, Kimpton and um, Lisa. And here's the thing. They, you know, great fun, a lot of, you know, a big, you know, big joy every day going to work, but something was missing. And so we went to work, and he, he was there in July of 2018, you'll see here, um, and this is pulled off of a dashboard that we plug into Den Dentrix, Eagle Soft, and Open Dental. You know, they did 181,000 in net production in July of 2018, but they were like, Gary, this number doesn't work. You presented what's possible here, and it just doesn't make sense. We went in and did what I'm going to show you next, and they are now, two years later, 332 thousand dollars per month and this is post covid and you know a ton of ppe a ton they reduced they had to reduce or extend their hygiene visits to 70 minutes seven zero um 
Uh, yeah, and, and you have some latest reports on their PeriProtect numbers as well, uh, Tanya, I understand you were talking to me about. I do. I, I pulled some just before we got sat down tonight. And they, this is where they were in 2018. They presented 154,000 and got 66,000 accepted for a 43% conversion rate. Now look at, that's restorative and elective. Look at their hygiene case acceptance. Presented 24, got accepted 15. Conversion rate's pretty decent, but what, look what happened. Now they went up. Now their conversion rates went down, but I want you to look at how much more they're presenting and how much more gets accepted on both sides. Look at this. This is the some of the highest hygiene. This is uh, July of 2020. Tanya, I have, this is some of the highest hygiene. 105,000 presented, over 45,000 accepted. Inside there is their Perio Protect, is yeah. their standard, you know, uh, um, you know, root planning and scalings. That's what's in there. Um, talk about what happened here for their Perry Protect. So in July, um, this is just coming out of COVID, right? So people are more aware, your patients are more aware that their gum health matters. We've known this for a long time, right? If you have chronic infections and inflammation in your gingival tissue, it is harder to manage your blood sugar if you're a type two diabetic. We know that these chronic infection and inflammation can contribute to arterial inflammation, can contribute to the progression of dementia, can contribute to ED, uh, some cancers, some arthritis uh, cases. People, we've been talking about this, but now with a pandemic, people are much more aware that their immune system matters. You need a robust immune system to fight off a viral attack. And you start talking to patients about what is relevant to them. And I'm estimating here, because I didn't break it down by month, um, I'm estimating 10,000 of that 45,000 right there is Perio Protect alone. Incredible. And, um, you know, my, and sadly, I lost my mom yeah. on, on April 3rd to, to COVID, and she had comorbidity. And people understand asymptomatic now where they didn't before. They understand comorbidities when you're reading the medical history form and you're having this dialogue you know, health is greater than disease. And if you have that as your purpose and right. you bring this alive, the educate patients are more willing to accept if you have the right education delivery system and a business model, which I'm gonna show you next. And then Tanya, I really want you to break down for everybody the um, the science behind this so that they can yep. better understand the impact of PeriProtect and how patients are willingly receiving hydrogen peroxide in a brand new way. Right, and benefiting from it. Yeah, so I just wanna go through the game board very quickly. If How they did this, people go, well, how did they do that? Well, in order to have a successful hygiene practice, you need to have a structured game board. And a game board is and a bonus system. For my hygienists out there, um, you know, you should get acknowledged for the value you create. So if you're creating higher production per day, you should get acknowledged for that. If you're um, you're having treatment and you're successful at being a great educator using an intro all camera and, and coming from this place of whole body health and you are great at that, you're gonna want, you know, you're gonna, you deserve to get more income for that. You should, you know, if that's, um, that's one way to acknowledge you. Obviously there's other ways too through personal acknowledgement. Um, but we believe that a scoreboard and a game board is important. And the way to do that for our doctors who are running businesses out there, our practice owners who are running businesses, you know, if I said you can have any part of a chess board, chess game, what would you take? Most people pick the queen, I pick the board because the board tells the players how to move. You see, so I wanna, this is the game changer for practice owners is to create a game board that allows you to have the time and money that you want and purpose all simultaneously. Everybody wins, the patient wins, the team member wins because they get bonused by position, not by, by a group. They get bonused on their impact that they're making on the health of a patient directly, whether it's an appointment coordinator, hygienist, treatment coordinator, assistant. I'm going to show you all that right now. So let me give it to you. So this is what I did for Team Baki. 
I sat down with them, and this is what we do with all of our clients. If you have no game board and you have no measures, it's very difficult to be at cause in the matter. And please get me, this is zero selling. This is all about engagement and education and letting the patient choose. There's no force for sale. This is all ethical, finding the money, getting the money, and keeping the money. And there's nothing wrong with that. And it's important because if you don't have your money right, you can't join the fight. And if you find yourself working too hard, not taking time off, spending nights and weekends in the practice, this will solve your problem. So if you want to do two, uh, 2 million in collections and you write off 10%, you have to produce 2.2, simple math. If you Now doctors and, and hygienists, this is where you take your time off and you make your money. 184 days a year for six weeks off for the doctor. If we have two hygienists, um, and we call them hygieniuses, not hygienists. We like hygieniuses better um, because you are smart and you make a difference for the education in the in the in the patient in the patient's mind. 368 days of hygiene. If you take now, I'm just doing a thousand dollars because when we first start out with practices, they're they're not doing 1600 usually. Um, but we start out at a very small place of $1,000, 368 days. We take 368,000 out. We, we subtract that from the production of the doctor that leaves the doctor's production of 9,956 9, 9, per day. And when you do that, um, you create these things called daily primary outcomes. Now, one of the things that most people uh, miss is how much treatment needs to be presented per day if the doctor's daily primary outcome needs to be 99.56. Well, you divide by a conversion rate of 67%. When you close 67% of your cases, um, <clears throat> or equal to 15,000 a day, when you close them, you'll end up having a doctor daily primary outcome of $10,000 and the hygiene daily primary outcome of 1,000. So how does that translate? We map this out and we put it over what we call, these are our positions, and we like to have fun here. Um, we, uh, we call appointment coordinators DOFIs, which are directors of first impressions. And their job is outcome-based, not being busy and filling time. But when that schedule is filled, the hygiene schedule is filled, hygienist, you can now produce if your schedule is filled. If that's the last thing that a DOFI does, instead of the first thing, because it's the highest confronting, it changes behavior when you bonus them. So in my book, Million Dollar Dentistry, you can get it online or Jay will uh, um, put a link here. My room cap, our room captain, Jay, you'll meet him later if you want to take action and have us, uh, Tanya and I, help you implement this. Um, he'll give you the link to uh, where to get the book. You get this daily, uh, this director of first impressions gets paid per day per column that this outcome happens. Financial Freedom Fighter is a treatment coordinator. They get paid on the conversion of that. The dental ninja, no, I'm not just an assistant. We elevate our assistants because they are the most trusted. The hygienist or the ninja are the most trusted by the patient. And they're the least usually involved in patient education. We move that forward and we get our, our ninjas really educating. And their responsibility becomes about the 10,000 per day, so they change their behaviors from just turning in, uh, rooms and instruments to causing the outcome for the day, looking for how you know any unscheduled treatment, they're proactive in that measure, and then hygienists produce 1,000 a day and present 7,500 a day. Since then, we've elevated, we start here, and then for the Bakis, we've elevated, and now we're, that we have those higher daily primary outcomes. Um, that everybody agrees to and they easily hit on a regular basis. So um, Tanya, I, I'd like you to pick up, now that we have the business model and we have the purpose and we have the formula, if you could pick up here and go over the science, that would be awesome. Oh, I am thrilled to do it, thank you. Um, I went back while you were just talking and looked at numbers. So of that 45,000 for the month of July, 17 was PerioProtect. And then in August, they did close to 25 in PerioProtect. And part of the reason why is because there are so many people who missed appointments, right? So much delayed care, so many things they need to be able to do at home when we couldn't get them into the office as quickly. So, um, Gary, can you see my screen? I think you can. I can. Okay, yep. terrific. So, at PerioProtect, our mission 
our goal is to put periodontal disease into long-term remission. So it's not just a short-term effect, it is a long-term effect. And the reason the prescription trays are off to the side is because this is a home care system that complements what you do in the office. So the reason it works so well is because you get people cleaned up, you send them home, and toothbrush, rinse, and floss can't get deep enough. There's just no way for them to manage this disease effectively, and it is a disease. Let's call it what it is. We're talking about infection, inflammation. It's a chronic disease. It's a chronic tax on your immune system. Even, albeit low grade, it's a chronic situation. If your pockets are deeper than three millimeters, you need additional help. And a simple way to treat this daily at home is with a prescription tray. This tray is unique. Um, there is an internal peripheral seal. It's made according to your pocket probing depth scores, and it will keep the medication in the tray so it won't leak out all over the mouth and deliver it really deep into periodontal pockets. So the tray is just a delivery device. There are many different medications that are used in the tray, but the primary antimicrobial is hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide is an excellent broad spectrum antimicrobial. Um, in the first place, it'll cut through your, your, your communities of bacteria. They're formed kind of like mushrooms and they're covered in a gooey substance called the matrix. Hydrogen peroxide and chlorine-based products can cut through that matrix really well. That's an oxidizing action. Um, hydrogen peroxide also will cut through bacterial cell walls with an oxidizing action. Essentially, it's breaking down protein chains. And the protein, the bacterial cell walls, essentially a bunch of proteins linked together. It'll cut through those protein chains, the peroxide will, the bacterial cell wall, and lyse the cell wall. Once you got a hole in that bacterial cell wall, your cell dies. And it's going to work against all different kinds of bacteria, aerobic bacteria, facultative anaerobes, anaerobes. You're going to kill all kinds of stuff but you're never gonna be able to sterilize this pocket. And you don't want to, you want healthy bacteria to regrow. So you combine that oxidizing power with the release of oxygen, as hydrogen peroxide's bubbling up, it's releasing oxygen gas, you are oxygenating the periodontal pocket. And this is key. If you can change the microenvironment of the periodontal pocket by adding oxygen, you can have a significant effect on the kind of bacteria that repopulate. As soon as you take the tray out of the mouth, the bacteria are going to repopulate. But oxygen puts your most virulent, your most dangerous, your gram-negative obligate anaerobes on the defensive. Oxygen is toxic to those bacteria, and it creates the right environment for healthy bacteria to regrow. In the mouth, it looks like this. The extensions come down much longer than you might ex expect. There's an internal peripheral seal and that extension. That seal and extension system works like a gasket. It prevents the medication from leaking out all over the mouth and pushes it really deep. Um, you wanna, your patients typically start wearing these trays twice a day, 10 to 15 minutes. You want a minimum of 10 minutes, 15 is ideal. Um, and then you're gonna try to get them down to one time a day as quickly as you can. The trays are very flexible. They're very comfortable, but they fit snugly. Um, they should not be easily dislodged. And Gary, I know you have a set. Can you talk from your own personal experience about what, what it feels like to wear this tray and what you've noticed? My compliance and everything is horrible except for this. <laughs> do you see how white my teeth are? It has to do with like, I just came from vacation in Tam, but like, like the benefits of fresh breath, like once I put them in, like initially, you know, it's like, okay, I, I have some, you know, I have it in, but like I'll, shower with it i'll i'll walk my dog with it and it's just it's just easy but i get once you get connected to the benefits it's just like it, it's invisible for me i i won't live without it yeah we hear we hear this a lot how clean your mouth feels how um white your teeth get how fresh your breath are these are these are in my opinion reasons why a lot of patients stick with the tray therapy long term yep. um yeah so, but the real reason behind it, of course, we never got into this for cosmetics, although that's a really nice effect. Um, the real reason is because it makes, it just improves the health of your gums. The research shows, and I should say, I used to be the research coordinator for Perio Protect. So um, I will give you guys locations for all the bibliographies and we'll, we'll follow up with an email to you so you have the full bibliography for the science behind Perio Protect. But the research shows significant, statistically significant, and also clinically significant reductions in bleeding and inflammation and pocket probing depths when you use the trays at home between your scaling appointments. 
Um, and this tray, this we're, we're branding it as the Perio tray, but this tray is the only tray that's on the market that has been cleared by the Food and Drug Administration to deliver medications deep. And again, you can pick whatever medication you want, but hydrogen peroxide at this low concentration, we don't want to cause sensitivity, so we keep it purposefully low. Even at 1.7%, it's really effective. So as Gary started off tonight, we talked about how you're going to get better results. I'm going to show you some visual better results. And the most obvious is in maintenance. This is a patient, just can't keep it up at home, add prescription tray therapy, and this is six months later. So it's not just an initial benefit, it's a long-term benefit. Here's a case. This is a patient, she comes in every three months, profuse bleeding. It's just two weeks of tray therapy. Now it's not 100% resolved, but it's so much better that it wasn't. It's just been two weeks. This is that same patient, two weeks of tray therapy. And if um, you're into your probing charts, uh, this is that patient I just showed you, 101 bleeding points down to seven in two weeks. We do not always get down to zero bleeding points, but you should be able to reduce the bleeding on probing by at least half in the first two weeks of treatment. This is another maintenance patient, just parcel infused to metal crowns, really hard margins to keep clean. You get a, imp, a crown on an implant. Those margins are also hard to keep clean. When you add tray therapy, and there's a month difference between these before and after images, then you can get so much healthier. And the initial phase, you wear the trays multiple times a day. Two, on, a, on very extreme cases, three, your goal is to get them down to one time a day as quickly as possible. When you start getting the, your results in from your own patients, it's so much easier to think about how you're going to implement this on a regular basis to make your patients' tissues healthier and to stay healthy. We want to put the disease in remission. This is a periodontist. This is actually a catapult reviewer. Um, the top image is the day of Lanap surgery, so laser-assisted laser new attachment procedure. Then the middle image is three months later. That's a nice surgical outcome. Trays are delivered after that middle image, used twice a day for six weeks. Combine that with a Profi. Look how beautiful that is. That is some healthy tissue. And now you drop down to one time a day and it should stay healthy. So it's important that your research be backed by clinical trials. There's two six-month controlled clinical trials, different examiners, um, and also one had three subject arms and the other had two then you are welcome to look through any of this, but I just wanna show you statistically significant. You want your results to be statistically significant so you know it's not some random chance that you're getting these good results. And if we look at the red, when you add, and we're just talking about the group, um, this is a, the two-arm group, scaling only or scaling with the trays and hydrogen peroxide, you had statistically significantly more effective reductions um, in pocket depths and bleeding in short-term use, and then let's look at a different study because this goes out for five years. This is with refractory maintenance patients. That's a 75% reduction in bleeding for the worst of your worst cases, your true refractory maintenance patients. That's a 75% reduction. Then do you see how it flatlines out to five years? You can maintain those gains long-term. And the tray therapy was working in both controlled clinical trials and in this long five-year study, equally well for smokers and non-smokers. We have one outlier. This is the long-term study. So we're, we're talking about better results, better results for your maintenance patients, better results um, for patients who have comorbidities too. All of, these, all of these chronic systemic inflammatory conditions have an interrelationship with the chronic inflammation in your gums. And let's just talk about type 2 diabetes for a moment, because all three of these studies, these are big studies, hundreds of thousands of patients, um, and they're run by the insurers. All of them um, affected type 2 diabetics. When you treated for gum disease, and there's no standard treatment. Some have surgeries. I'm assuming all have scaling. Some are going to have laser therapy. Some are going to have antibiotic therapy. Some are going to have, um, you might even have some ozone therapy in here. Uh, so hundreds of thousands of patients, you're just treating for gum disease. The cost, of the medical cost for your diabetic care drops significantly. That matters to the insurers, but it should also matter to your patients. And it should matter to you because it indicates that your patients don't need as much care because they are healthier. 
So I want to just highlight one case here because we're still talking about better results, how you can get better results for your patients, why, you're, why you want to add this important prescription tray as home care. This patient has blown out number 18. It just needs to be extracted. He walks in, he's huge um, abscess, it's obvious, and he's in a lot of pain. So walks in off the street, and Dr. Tim Pronger is the treating uh, dentist, and he agrees to extract the tooth. He makes room on the schedule and says, if I can get you numb, I'll take it out. But while he's waiting to see if the patient can get numb and he's reviewing his health history, the patient's only in his 30s, but he's had a heart attack and he has type 2 diabetes. And he says to the patient, you have significant infections in your gums. If you don't take care of this, you are going to be at a higher risk for another heart attack or a stroke. And it's going to be hard to take care of your diabetes. It's going to be harder to manage your blood sugar when you have this kind of infection. And the patient says, I can't manage my blood sugar at all. It's out of control. So they agree to, they agree to treatment. The patient, they get, the, he gets numb. Doctor agrees to extract number 18. And the patient agrees to therapy. So it's not terrible bone loss. It's some bone loss, but it's not awful. So we're, it's 100% bleeding and probing, though. So the treatment plan here, this initial chart was the day they extracted 18. Wait till the site heals. At the time, you didn't have a scanner. Um, take your impressions. Send them off. Because he was so advanced, he had him wear these trays four times a day. The patient self-reported three to four times a day. And then normally you'd have a patient come back in in two weeks and you'd start scaling. So the benefit here of using the tray therapy first is you can get the bleeding and the infection under control even before you start scaling, because when you, when you scale, there's a rush of bacteria into the bloodstream. If you're healthy, it's not a big deal. Body can handle it in about 90 minutes. But if you're not healthy, if you've had a heart attack, you have cardiovascular disease, you have type 2 diabetes and it's under control, it could be a risk factor for your systemic condition. So treat Try to get that inflammation and infection under control before scaling is a great way to treat these systemically involved patients. And then scaling begins and we're gonna follow this patient out. So just visually, one month of tray usage. Okay, the, the tooth was extracted, but we're just talking about one month of tray usage for the gums. Look at the changes here. Do you see how the calculus is beginning to be worn away? That is because hydrogen peroxide as an oxidizing agent breaks down the protein chain. Calculus is basically a skeleton of protein, mm. and it will soften it, make it easier to remove. But everybody, look at that tissue. I mean, that's just, this is oxidizing and oxygenating. And I just want to say hydrogen peroxide is super safe. There's peroxide in your white blood cells. There's a peroxide in your saliva. Every time you exhale, there's peroxide in your mouth. There's peroxide in human breast milk. Um, we're all making hydrogen peroxide in our liver right now. It's completely biocompatible. Um, same patient, one month of tray usage. Okay, but this is the exciting part. And this is why, it's, I wish we had more of this kind of data. This hemoglobin A1C is a measurement of long-term blood sugar control or lack, in this case, of control. If you're healthy, you do not have diabetes, your A1C should be a 5.6 or less. If you're diabetic, they want it under a 7. He's at an out of control 9.3. Extract the tooth, get the gums healthy. And he and even before scaling, he's down to a 5.8. That's a really big deal. For every drop from a 9 to an 8 or another drop from an 8 to a 7, every numerical drop corresponds to a 10% reduction in the risk for a microvascular event. What you're doing in the dental chair has such important consequences for a patient's health and wellness. So... You can see after scaling, so he uses the trays three to four times a day, and then once scaling starts, you drop down to twice a day. And this is five weeks, I believe, after scaling. And you see a few bleeding points still. Look at that tissue. Removed all the calculus. This is gorgeous, such good work. And it's we lost track of this patient after about two years, but we were able to keep up and get his hemoglobin A1Cs. Look, he's even, he's able to stay low for another year. This is exciting. And here, this is 18 months in, he's got a crown. This happens a lot. Get the gingival foundation cleaned up. You've got the trust of the patient. They'll go for that crown they need. Um, and just two bleeding points. Can't always get to zero, but two is nice. And look at his tissue. 
right? If you did a little ortho here, we might even have better results. So, better results. Hygienists, this is going to be so much easier for you if your patients have prescription trays with hydrogen peroxide between scaling appointments. Because it softens the calculus, because they're not bleeding as profusely, you can do your job faster. You don't have to scrape as hard. And if you're hand scaling right now, use the hydrogen peroxide as an aid to get you through that maintenance appointment so much faster. This patient is just the poster patient for why hydrogen peroxide is beneficial for you. He refuses to brush his teeth. He refuses to floss. Whatever reason, he'll wear tray therapy. It's not invasive. It's really not threatening. He said he'll wear it. Now, just to be clear, you want patients to still brush their teeth, ideally after they wear their trays, because hydrogen peroxide will break up the biofilm on the tooth surface and make your toothbrushing a lot more effective. He does have some areas of really severe destruction. Okay, tray therapy alone. Do you see how soupy and goopy that is? I know some of you are twitching. You really want to get in there and get that hard barnacle like calculus just to fly off, but it's going to be so much easier on you and your patient if it's this gooey, soupy mess. And it gets there because the hydrogen peroxide modifies that baked on calculus and makes it super soft and easy to remove. Look at this same patient six months later after a 4910. Can you imagine what this might have looked like without the tray therapy? So he's still not brushing or flossing. Good results easier appointments. He's 100% bleeding and probing down to 6% now. This is a cause for a celebration. And I want to talk a little bit about Dr. Michelle Huckey because our third point tonight was that you'd have higher satisfaction, not just for your patients, but for your teens. So Dr. Michelle, um, I got to know her really well. She's part of the Next Level Practice community. So Next Level Practice is Gary's company, part of that community. And she's she just drew a line in the sand. This is stuff, this is the kind of thing that Gary talks about. We're just gonna draw a line in the sand. You can't get out of my practice without focusing on your gum health, right? You, you've got to focus on it. And so I want to show you some of her own results and, and how well patients have responded here. So this is a patient that um, was in trays and scaling. Look at this, this is a 97% reduction in bleeding. And Dr. Michelle started herself not with this kind of bleeding, these are not her charts. She had stubborn areas that were getting deeper. Um, five, six millimeter, four and five millimeter pockets that she was afraid was gonna go to six and she'd need some laser therapy. And she was using tray therapy herself. And when those areas, those really stubborn things she's worked on for, you know, and she's a dentist, she knows how to take care of her teeth. Things she's worked on for years resolved then she started testing on some of these patients that you're going to see here. So this is 100% bleeding and probing, not deep pockets, but a really inflamed, bloody mouth that goes down 100%. This gives you so much satisfaction and confidence in your treatment. Here we've got 97% bleeding and probing that goes down, that drops down. I'm sorry, 100% bleeding and probing that drops down by 97%. That's exciting, another case to celebrate. And then this is 100% bleeding on probing that drops down to 4%. And this is a combination. This is a comprehensive approach combining scaling with your tray therapy. 96% reduction. And patients who weren't paying attention before, they're paying attention now, right? This is the way we like to explain it to patients because one of the things we need to talk about, our fourth point, so we had better results, easier um, appointments, higher satisfaction both for you and your patient, but also let's reduce the risks that we face in this pandemic. Your immune system is like a battery, we tell patients. The more things you have hooked up to that battery, the quicker its power fades. If you have chronic gum disease, it is a chronic burden on your immune system and your body cannot respond as robustly to a bacterial or a viral attack. 
it's important to get healthy. The best defense against this disease, if you get it, if you can't avoid getting it and you get it, the best defense is a robust immune system. And patients are hearing this message and it's beginning to matter more. And so I ask you, dentists and hygienists, like Dr. Huckey, what, what level of bleeding are you comfortable with? And it's a sincere question, right? There's no acceptable level of bleeding. It's kind of like that famous definition of pornography. I can't define it, but I know it when I see it. <laughs> bleeding gums are like that, right? There's no clear definition about when it's too much, but you know it when you see it. So if you create a standard in your practice for what's unacceptable with bleeding gums, then it's really easy to explain to patients why you're recommending it and who you're recommending it to. And we don't think you can get every patient down to zero. So at where we are at Paraprotect, we say, if you have 10 bleeding points or more, you deserve to hear about prescription traits. You deserve to get the information to make the decision for yourself. If you're a high risk patient, you've got systemic uh, inflammatory diseases. Let's say you've lost teeth due to gum disease and you've had implants. You wanna keep those implants as long as possible. Maybe you got a genetic predisposition. Um, some people are genetically predisposed to gum disease. Those patients are gonna struggle more. They're even a better, uh, not a better, but they're, they need more help is what I need to say. And then anybody who's debanded in ortho, it's just a given. You want to clean up any gingival infections they have and whiten their teeth. You are going to see white teeth uh, in about five weeks. It's significantly whiter. Um, if they have anterior restorations, that can be a problem. But for most patients, this is an issue. And I ask, I'm going back though, because white teeth, fresh breath, awesome. But it's about the health of your patients, right? What's your level? If you agree with Lang and Adler and the other researchers in this study, that, not, that lack of bleeding, continuous, and they're looking at two and a half years here, continuous lack of bleeding on probing was a 98% accurate predictor of no further periodontal damage, a 98% accurate predictor of remission, then I encourage you to get a standard because that standard can guide you to help make your hygiene department a focal point for your patient health. It's not just, so patients aren't coming in just to get cleanings. They're coming in because they know it, because you're on a mission, you got a purpose to get healthier. Michelle Huckey's office, that is such a funny case. She has patients who are so excited about their results that they, well, before pandemic, they were talking to each other in the waiting room and a patient came back and said, I'd like to get those trays too. When does that happen? This is exciting. It's exciting when you can help your patients get this much healthier. And when you can, you're doing dentistry and you're getting better results. You're doing it for the right reason. You can increase revenue. So earlier tonight, Gary was talking about daily primary outcomes. If you just add a case a week and you're working 48 weeks, this is how much money you can add just through prescription trays. So this is based on trays and gel, costing about $800 to your patient. So this is new revenue. And I just wanna show you what people are doing here. Um, this is a doctor who's in uh, Illinois. She's about an hour outside of St. Louis. In 2019, she did almost $12,000 a month. And the idea is, listen, half of Americans have chronic periodontitis. They need your help. You're not gonna see them for three months. It's the, the infection's gonna grow back. They need your help. This is a great way to help them maintain the good results you got in the office between office visits. Um, there's a doctor in Florida, $7,000 a month last year, just added in. You got a daily primary outcome of $1,000. This is a nice boost to, the, to that hygienist. Uh, doctor, so doctor, this Dr. B is Dr. Baki, since we have permission to share names and, and numbers here. Last year, they were doing $10,000 a month on average. So this year, they're closed for a couple of months. As I mentioned already, 17 and 24, $1,000 in July and August. And that is good work helping patients resolve the infection and inflammation in their gums. Um, this doctor here, Dr. H, uh, she was doing over 10,000 a month last year, and she of uh, 10,000 she was doing 10,000 a month. This is in 2020. I'm giving you these numbers here. 
But look at that. She's beating her 2019 numbers and there was a pandemic. So it's exciting to be able to see these kind of results. Gary, I'm gonna make you presenter again. But what's really exciting is to celebrate their success, right? That you can get them this much healthier. Pretty awesome, Tanya. <laughs> the results, the teams are doing it. I just gotta congratulate the teams because this is great work. Oh my gosh, I just, my my PowerPoint just went away. How crazy is that? That's pretty awesome. Where did it go? Oh my gosh. Oh, here it is. Can you there see you it? Go. Yes. That's good. I got a little nervous there. Um, but one of the things that we find is what gets in the way of it is misalignment, right? Where maybe the doctor is really excited about this, but the hygienists are not on board or we have hygienists who are like, well, duh, hashtag duh, this is who I am, but I don't have the, the system or the structure or the support. And you know, I love Jason and Tracy down in Jacksonville. I wanna introduce you to them because that's where they started. And they're a blast, by the way. I mean, these are some fun pictures. I had the privilege of visiting their office. You, Tanya and I did million dollar hygiene. We have a million dollar hygiene um, uh, course that we did and Jason is a skeptical OU grad he's a sooner and he moved down to Jacksonville Tracy is she and I have a vanilla cake in common um, and they are just a blast they have a social media photography studio in their place they're just so fun but you know they had this lifestyle where they have two young boys two French bulldogs you know beautiful family but like Tracy is the CFO and Jason's the dentist and they were, you know, just getting burnt out and they were doing the same thing over and over. And they thought, you know, hey, we have a top team. We, we're, we're doing everything that we think we should be doing, but nothing's changing. And for the, you know, Jason would always sneak out at the end of a seminar. You, you're, he would be there and I'm like, Jason, I want to talk to you. And he'd be like gone. And finally, after the third time, he's like, all right, let's I want to learn more about how you approach doing what you do. Um, and of course, they're fun. We have baseball in common. I sent them to the, they came to the Yankee Stadium here in New York. Um, but the first thing I did with them was I showed them that they have all everything they need all under their patient roof already. See, why they thought they couldn't take off was because they they have money and time collapsed on top of one another. We uncollapse that. So the first thing we do is we look at this thing called our care system. Care system is case acceptance, CA, R is retention, E is the experience and acquisition of new patients. So what I did was we his average crown fee with his insurances and everything and his build up, crown and build ups are 1500. Now I'm not into selling crowns like a DSO, but what I am is I like taking what the revenue is with a good case acceptance system. And you need to put one in. I'm gonna show it to you what, what they put in after I show you these numbers. I like to I like numbers because it brings facts to you know reality and, and what's really possible. And then you know, retention is a big problem because in hygiene, if you don't get your patient to come back at least twice, that's why we like, you know, and we know that that's happening. But even worse, they're coming back once because you know you push off of an appointment, you have a pandemic, before you know it, they're only coming in once. 28%, so we want to get them two times. If they come in, two profies, two exams, set of bite wings. If you add those two, two things together, the average annual value of an adult, focusing in on internal marketing. See, most practices are for focusing on external marketing, trying to get new patients in as solving the problem. The problem with that is you drop them in the top and they go out the back. And when they're there, they don't invest in anything. So that's that's the machine you wanna fix. And I just like bringing numeric numbers to it. And you know, um, Tracy's a mathematician. She's a former math teacher. And so she loved this, but she was still skeptical. She's like, well, all right, that's all nice and good, Gary, but like, well, how do we go about, you know, doing that? I'm, I, you piqued my interest. And I was like, okay, Trace, he's really, she was a hard, you know, Cracker Jack. I love our CFOs that are Cracker Jacks. I said, look, you need to establish benchmarks. These are the national benchmarks that we have set across the U.S. 67% case acceptance, 90% pre-appoints, perio maintenance, minimally, uh, on average, 35%. And like I said, we're eight and four. And, um, and the retention of patients, 
eight out of 10 coming back twice. Now, okay, that makes sense. Well, how does that translate? Well, I want you to do this quick exercise with me. Take out a pen and paper. I want you to walk through for your practice. Let's do that right now. Write in your, just look, if, if you're doing PPOs, it, even you wanna do lower, do 800, do, you know, whatever a buildup is, 200. Now, your average annual value, if it's 800 plus 200, simple math, that gets you to 1,000. So, you had 1,000 in case acceptance per average patient, two profies, two exams, set of bite wings, let's just call it $300. If you have 1,000 in restorative, 300 in retention, right? You add those together, that's 1,300, and then you multiply times the number of patients. I like a shorter time of 12 months. Some people do 18 months, I like 12. If you do, let's say, you know, let's say you have a thousand patients at $1,300, um, that's $1.3 million. This practice, when we first go in, is doing 600, 700. So they're usually, when I do this capacity calculator, half or a third of their true capacity. Why? Because they're looking at new patient acquisition, not the health of the patient, and when you center your hygiene, make that the center of your practice, the center of everything starts coming from that. And that's what happened to Jason and Tracy. We put in this patient education system, and this is the keystone. This is what's underneath these numbers, is an education system that allows the patient to choose. Our philosophy, share intelligent information in this sequence, with intelligent patients and they will make intelligent decisions. And this is the process. And when you do that really well, the patient then chooses and doesn't force you. So here's numbers in 2016. This is pulled from their Dentrix, Eagle Soft, and Open Dental. And you'll have an opportunity if you have those three systems to work directly with me and Tanya. Um, and we will help you in the initial stage of getting you up and running. Um, and we'll do it. We're, we're going to do that for free tonight for catapult people uh, for the first 20 that register with uh, Jay. So I'm going to give up my time and Tanya's going to give up her time. She's going to train you for free. I'm going to do your dashboard, no cost. We're going to plug in. I'm going to share it with you at a Zoom. We want to really launch and, and, and catapult you forward, uh, pardon the pun. Um, but just look what happened here. 2016, they were producing um, 117,000 just applying what we said. Now look what they're doing in 2020, three years later, $100,000 more, a million dollars more per year, per year, $1.2 million more, um, just to give you an idea. And where did we get that from? We started, he moved from a drill, fill and bill specialist and, and coming from that context to on a good day, he saved the smile, on a great day, he saved the life. His hygienist he supported got around them, built an education system around them. Look at the retention. They're not coming in the front and not investing and going out the back. Negative three growth. That means 30 new patients came in the front door. They recaptured eight of the people that haven't been back. They lose 41. See, most people don't look at how many patients are lost. We track that in our system. At 18 months and one day in that month, 41 patients were lost. So that's, most people only focus in on the up, the, like, oh, we got 30 new patients, we're doing fine. No, you lost three, then look what happens. We close the door. Yes, we're still losing 41, but now we have a completely different, we attract more on the front end because when you become a whole body health practice, people are attracted to you. On the backside of COVID, when we reopened, patients don't look at dentistry as pain, pain of pain, pain of this, pain of that. They equate dentistry equals health, and they know they better get healthy. That's why they were driven to get back in their practices, and that's why we had this uptick, and not only just this uptick, this long-range outcome two months, three months after people have been open. So imagine if you could do right now, you were freed from the terrors of the minutia of the day-to-day -day BS, like literally, you as a doctor or practice owner can work one hour a week with your team leader, and that's your working on the business. And you had, when your money's right, you can join this fight for being a missionary, for getting people healthy and li having living longer lives. So if you're interested in finding the money, getting the money, keeping the money, and, and you want, it's just about having the power of right tools and the right advice 
you can work on your business, not in it, and you can support the growth of your team because there's a lot of team members on this call tonight and on this message tonight that are sitting there that want to be unleashed to do this, but there's no structure for it. And if you just want a simple way to do that, um, we are offering, Tanya and I are offering, I'm doing a 30-minute practice analysis. This is Jay Clark, my good man. He is the, he takes care of getting you set up. So if you're interested um, and you want to be one of the first 20 to be a part, work with me directly, and I don't usually um, do free 30-minute sessions, but I'm going to do that tonight for Catapult people. And if you watch this after, you can still contact Jay um, and see if we're still doing them. And if not, we'll uh, figure out a way to get you set up. And then Tanya will give you free PerioProtect training. If you just you want to move forward, you're tired of you know doing the same thing over and over. You want to make the unacceptable the unacceptable, and you want a simple way to get related and find out how to do what we talked about tonight. Get in contact with Jay, and he'll set you up in the next week or two with me. We'll get you in as soon as we can. That's why we're doing twenty. Um, and uh, I look forward to working with you. Tanya, closing notes uh, before we have questions? Yeah, so everybody, you've got a control panel. You can open it up and ask questions if you like. Um, the best way to, we're gonna send out, out an email after this, so you'll have all of our contact information if you have, if you want, have, you know, if questions come up or if you want something. So um, Gary, I know that we have sent several offices your way to do what, what you're calling a snapshot. And the idea is, not only are you going to get a sense of, of where, what your practice is doing, they're going to see numbers in a new way based on your dashboard, but you're also going to find ways that they have lost revenue and then suggest ways where they can build revenue, but in, in a system that is devoted to patient health. That's why I like it so well, right? So that, that's the purpose here. Doing well while doing good is what we call it, like allowing yourself to not be a starving artist, but actually have a healthy practice have a healthy team and have healthy patients that's the whole mission the triple win we call it yeah we really are just scratching on the surface here everybody um so i want we want to be respectful of your time it's been an hour already so we understand that we need to to conclude and let you get to your ce questions um but i do encourage you if if you are looking to bounce back better if you want to focus on patient health in the middle of a pandemic when people need answers, right? They, they haven't been able to come into your practice for regular care. You've got patients backed up. You can't get them all in at the same time. It's a great way to deliver better care and just make it easier on yourselves. It's gonna make it easier and you're gonna do better. And we look forward to hearing from you and working with you in the future. Thanks for your time tonight.